Bear down, Bears fans. Time for the Chicago Bears podcast. Pat's gone. He'll be back tomorrow. I'm Carmen sitting in with my good friend Lance Briggs. What's up, Carmen? How are you, buddy? How you doing? That was a great intro right there. You like that? That was a lot of energy. I mean, not as good as Pat's. I, I, because this is Pat's show, I'm going to agree with you. Okay. But that was damn good. It's also a little hard to muster up the energy after what we witnessed yesterday. <laughs> uh, I was there for that in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard, I, the, I heard the tailgate. I heard that it was the most welcoming tailgate ever. Ever. I tell you, the fans were welcoming, but I, I it's almost like these fan bases now answer. It's sad. They're like taking pity on us almost. Mm, right. You know, they're just like, man, you guys are really bad. Yeah. If you're in a bad way, right. you're in a bad time. And they're awesome. And they've got Mahomes and they've got Kelsey and they've got Taylor Swift in the building. And it's like, they, they didn't even, they didn't even give us crap. They're just they're like, come on over here. I got a broad for you. I mean, come get I'm this t- broad, huh? Lance, that's it. They're like, well, you need a hug and some burnt ends. <laughs> that, that, that was our experience. Now I will say it was my first time ever at Arrowhead. Yes. Uh, it was a fun experience. The tailgate. I mean, it's, they've got so much space for it and it's, it goes on endlessly. It seems like in that vibe and that energy in that stadium. Yeah. I mean, how many times did you play in Arrowhead? Oh, not much. Not many. Yeah. Not y- many. Yurko Yer- only played once, and he played in the AFC for four seasons. Only played. He played one game when he was with the Packers. He said, "I think it was '93." He played Narrowhead against Montana. We played my rookie year as our last game. Yeah. In Arrowhead, and Priest Holmes broke the record. Oh, is that right? And it was one of those. He's not breaking the record on us. <laughs> you know, and he did the little. You know. <laughs> he did the priest thing. The priest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a it's a it's a cool place to see a game. But yesterday was it, it was it was terrible. I mean, like, and I I don't even know like how to start this or where to go with this, other than, um, you know, I hate to say it, Lance, but the, the Arizona's got to win. Houston's win. C.J. Stroud's got nine hundred passing yards. I mean, the Bears are. Uh, I I don't. I think without question, and the Broncos have their own issues, and it's crazy Correct. that that's the matchup this week. But the Bears, they're sure look like the worst team in football right now. Yep. Yeah. The, um, I wouldn't even say arguably. I think they're the worst team in football right now, and um, um, and I and there are some reasons for it. You know, there are reasons for it. I, I think that uh, they started this season with poor effort. Mm. You know, it, it, and that is talentless. You don't need yeah. talent to put forth the right attitude and effort. You should bring that every day. Um, we knew that the expectations were going to be low for the Bears. We knew that. We did know that. We know that we're building. Mm-hmm. But we want to see a step in the right direction. The problem right now is that um, we have to we have to get Justin to where we can comfortably say, okay, by the end of the year, all right, we're in a position where we're we're comfortable there, so we know we can do with these draft picks because these draft picks right now are crucial for us. And you see what happens when you don't have premier pass rushers. Yeah. All right, sure. you gotta have you, you gotta protect and you gotta be able to rush the the, uh, the passer. Amen. I mean, the lack of pass rush uh, continues to be probably the biggest issue. Like, and I guess we can get to Justin and the other side of the ball in a minute because you bring up a good point about that. But just the lack of pass rush, the lack of difference makers, and I get it. There are some injuries that it's it's you you don't want to make excuses. They're really being stressed here early in the season with what's going on with all the injuries in their defensive backfield. But the 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 lack of difference makers on that front four. And the lack of uh, really any ability to generate a pass rush is uh, it's been very evident and yeah. it's a glaring weakness in these first three weeks. And and, and it's it, it just re- to me, it really goes to show like, you know, uh, um, I talk with with uh, with a lot of fans all the time and they talk about, you know, Justin Jefferson and mm-hmm. oh, man, you know, he's unstoppable and this and that. Well, Justin Jefferson never gets the ball if you can't block. Right. You know, what I mean, and if you can't rush the passer, your defensive backs get exposed. That's just what happens. You can only cover for yeah. so long, you know. So we have a ton of skilled guys, guys that can play. And I think that with the right pass rush, these guys go from being good players to uh, the best defensive backfield mm. in the NFL. I think they're that good, but they get exposed because we can't get to the quarterback, you know. So that's it's and and, and we decided that we were gonna we were gonna. Um, uh, go the offensive route, which right. I think was the right route. Right, it was the right way to go. You know, you have you have a quarterback. We're putting out. We're we're building this offense. We're building this team around Justin Fields, but we also know that we take a hit defensively by not doing that. So we need more points offensively because defensively we're not there. 
All right, so Justin, because uh, you make excellent points here. Like they obviously spent the offseason trying to eliminate all the excuses because mm -hmm. they need to get an answer, like you said. You know, Yurko and I talk about it a lot. This is a crucial year because at the end of the year, you got to decide on that fifth year option. So I'm with you. Like I got the offseason plan and I was worried about the talent across that front four going into the season. Um, but this was supposed to be like the next step in the evolution or the progress of Justin Fields in this offense. And Lance, we're just not seeing it. I mean, it was okay. bad live yesterday. I rewatched the game this morning and it looked worse on tape. Yep. Um, it's not all Justin's fault. Not I at all. Get that. Not at all. But, but and man, none of it looks good. Right. None now, of it man. looks good. None of it looks good. There's and 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 you know, to, to compound on, on the, the mistakes that are happening, you have, two takeaway or two turnovers on consecutive drives at the end of the half, you know, and they, they, they score, they get points off of it. It's bad. Um, but we had leaving last year, there was a, a recipe for our success. All right. Mm. Now I'm not seeing that recipe at all in these first three games. I'm just not seeing it. And they fought it last year. They fought it last year. We, we, we were kind of in this position last year where we were like, we're really bad. Like we're really bad. Yeah. And then we started changing. We started doing the quarterback runs and we started making, uh, you know, we started seeing, seeing change, not seeing that in these first games. I'm not seeing the recipe that was working last year. And that's disappointing. I think the answer they're they're leaving more blockers in they're blocking a lot better, but they're only, uh, um, um, sending two not receivers, sending, out routes. sending two receivers and they're not sending two receivers on, on, you know, cover four beaters. They're sending them on deep routes, which is leaving Justin in there to hold the ball, and there's nobody to throw to. You know, if you and, and I saw that, I know cover they, they ran cover four. I'm sure of it. They ran cover four. Um, and if you run cover four, you gotta run cover, you gotta have beaters. So Chiefs were in a lot of cover four yesterday. I don't know if they run a lot of cover four, but I did see okay. it in a play action. I saw it in a play action where they had two, we had two receivers. What are cover four beaters? So cover four beaters, know. you gotta have it's like uh like double digs. You okay. gotta have them on, on the same side where you stress the uh you stress the uh the the safeties. Okay. They don't know if the if if this receiver is going deep in or deep out. And then you run a run a, like a, a shallow dig and you run a dig on top. So is this some, I mean, this is something that at some point on the sidelines, right? Like somebody's got to look at this and say. In this situation versus th th this is what they like right. to run. This is what we're going to run to beat it. <clears throat> so I love this. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing right there, man. I, there are things that I say. And the other thing too, you know, is, is uh, I called it, I called it. I'm like, uh, uh, they're in the red zone. And I said, this is where Matt Nagy runs a shovel pass. They run they a did, shovel yeah. pass, and we don't pick it up. Yeah, you you nailed that. Was on the first touchdown, right? Yeah, that was, was the first I touchdown. Think, yeah, it was the first touchdown. Right, I think it was the first touchdown. Yeah, I said it. He's yeah. and if you turn the tape on, every game that he's played in from here to when he was with the Bears, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah, these are alerts that that don't take talent to recognize. Mm. Okay, they they should know that. They should be waiting for that play to put to happen. That's a good point. Um, all right, a few other things. I want to get back to some of the defensive issues, mm -hmm. uh, but just sticking on the offense, sticking with Justin. Uh, is it to, like, the detriment of Justin that they're trying to do different things? Absolutely. Yeah? I mean, what? but what happens if they – I'm assuming they're doing this because they're trying to get answers about like, what is he long-term and can he be the kind of quarterback we need him to be to really thrive and succeed? I mean, there's only so much you're going to be able to do by cutting the field in half with constant rollouts and quarterback design quarterback runs that are probably just going to get your quarterback hurt. I mean, like, how do you weigh that Lance? How do you like to say, we want to see the progression of Justin Fields. And we want to see if he can be a pocket passer, but at the same time, we have to accentuate his strengths. How do they balance that? Well, you do what you you do what you need right now, you know. And right now, he's a dynamic player that has a skill set. Okay, now can he develop into the pocket passer? He's going to have to eventually. But if you want him for a, a long period of time, you know, we're talking we're talking ten years. Why does he have to be the pocket passer that you want him to be in year two, two, one, two, and three? Be the guy that we need you to be. You know, Josh Allen, you know, he thrives in an offense that he has been running. Yes, Quarterback runs, run after run, and he runs through people. So be the, be the player that we need you to be right now. 
and allow you to to develop and blossom into an offense that you can stay in with the same offensive coordinator for however many years. But do the things that are successful for you. Okay. Um, so you mentioned, like, why are we not recognizing these cover four schemes and why are we not having beaters against them? Why does it look so easy when it is Andy Reid and Matt Nagy doing things? And I get the personnel is phenomenal, and we talked about the Bears' lack of pass rush, and it's always going to be easier. But even to, I think, a very – I don't think you need to even have your eye or Yurko's eye to look at some of the design and some of the scheme and just go, wow, they've got te- – I mean, M- Miami's doing this right now with Mike McDaniel. They they are stressing defenses so much with scheme, sometimes scheme alone, and player execution's huge, I get it, but scheme alone is you've got guys – open you've got creative things in the red zone you've got creative things down in tight inside the 10 and mm-hmm. i don't see it with this bears offense ever well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you're, <laughs> you're, i'm not you're, crazy you're, right you're not you're not crazy you're not crazy and and it's 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 interesting because <clears throat> on the on the defense side, i'm gonna talk defense real quick we don't come up and challenge receivers when i mm. say we don't we're not aggressive enough with the receivers so we allow them to release freely Okay, we get against teams and they get up and they challenge our receivers. They're up, they're pressing. Okay, they challenge us, you know. And so you, you, without this is this is without even blitzing. Right. Okay, <clears throat> there's an aggressive way to play football without blitzing. All right, and I do think we need to dial up some blitzes, but you know we're not aggressive enough on that side. And on the flip side, we don't we're <laughs> we're not effective for a lot for a lot of reasons, honestly. Yeah. But yeah. for a lot of reasons, and we we went out, we got some receivers, you know, and like you said before, like all those plays weren't all Justin's fault. Justin, just put some balls where receivers can catch the ball. I mean, D, you almost <laughs> never expect DJ to drop a pass. He dropped one uh, that was that was right before I think that second turnover. The second, t- yep. Right. I mean, um, to to your point, like that's a great throw. That's a drop in the bucket by Justin. It's got to be made. Watching it live and then seeing it on tape, I had a little bit of a different reaction about the throw down the field um, to Chase Claypool. You know, watching it live, and we were in the back end zone. That play was going away from us. It looked like, oh, did Justin earn to throw that ball? Watching it on tape, and it's like, wait a minute, Chase Claypool, you're six four, dude. This so this you're is six four. This is the argument that I had with Alex Brown. Okay. He said, hey, he underthrew that. I said, he's throwing it to a 6'4 receiver. That, that, that throw is the throw you throw so that a 6'4 receiver can catch it. Thank you. Over whoever is around. I, I don't get it. Right. Yeah, I, and like with his feet on the ground and not, I mean, yes, go up in the air with your huge radius, catch right. radius. I mean, and so it's a combination of all these things. I guess that has gotten us to this point and what makes it look so bad. I mean, it's yeah. it's hard to put it on one guy, but it's like across the board right now. I don't know what the bright spot is, Lance, and that's what sucks about this right now. I yeah. I honestly don't know. Like I, you you can't pull a positive from this. It's hard. It's hard. I you know the other thing you know each week my impact player I say is Tremaine Edmonds. You know, and we're looking for a player on defense that will spark. You know, he's in a prime position. He's been in this defense. Yeah. You know, for years, he knows what's going on, you know, and, and, you know, he had 16 tackles, but honestly, he should have had 26, <laughs> you know, he knows that he missed a lot of tackles, you know, but, but th- this defense is looking for a spark and, and he is the guy that has to, to be that guy. He has to be that spark uh, and it's disappointing. And, and there's also, th- you know, and, and when, like I said, when I, when I look and I see these alerts, um, and I'm watching TV and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing a scouting report on the Kansas city chiefs, mm-hmm. but I see what they're going to do. Right. You know, I'm wondering why our linebackers aren't recognizing it or our players aren't recognizing it and playing over the top. Okay. There was a, uh, there was a rub route play, you know, with, uh, with trips bunch over to our, to the defense's right. And I'm like, listen, I'm watching this play. This is an alert, but you don't see anybody talking. That linebacker needs to cheat to the outside. Yep. He got he got uh uh he ended up getting uh was this on the well, touchdown? This is on a on a touchdown. Yeah, I believe it's a touchdown. Yep. The, I think like Brisker got kind of caught it up. It was Brisker. And, yeah, it they motioned Brisker. somebody across the formation, and then Brisker got sort of they had. I I think I know the exact. It's, play you're talking it's absolutely about. you know, yeah. but these are again these are alerts, and you have to know body from your body in alignment that you need to you need to back up a little bit. You need to go a little bit to the wide side because they're going to try to pick you. Why like this defense can't set an edge, Lance? That's nope. A, 
Like, mm-hmm. what is that? I mm-hmm. it, it, this was a this was a recurring problem last year. It's happening again. This it's like everybody's flowing to the middle. And you know, York always talks about stop going places too fast. Read and recognize. Mm-hmm. And I like mm-hmm. you know basic things. Well, if you're in an eight man front, you're supposed to have a key. All right, you also have a key. All right, and you have to trust your key. So your key allows you to play fast. So whatever your key, your key steps to the left. You can play fast down to that to that uh, to that gap, okay. If you're in a, a seven man front, which you're in two or or uh, four, now you have to you have to slow play it a little bit, all right, because you have the two gap. You, know, you have to two, watch. Okay. You have the two gap, all right. The it, it could call, fall back, and they're going to stay on that double team. You have to fall back, but if they but a lot of teams are staying play side. So you know uh, when, we, when they played Green Bay, they ran a lot of cover two or a lot of four. Aaron didn't, he wasn't, when he got the ball, he wasn't trying to cut back. So you see this one or two times, you're like, I'm just going to hit the hole and see it until he decides to cut back. You know, it's just one of those things. Like, it's mm. logic got has to kick in. Yeah. You know, I can get in and stop this play right now. And until he comes back, I'm, we're going to, we're going to stop at the line of scrimmage or, or even in the backfield. Yeah. You said there's a way to play defense aggressively without blitzing. A lot. Like how how do you do that? What what is you gotta press these? You have to come up, you have to press these receivers. Press. They play they've they've been facing um a lot of tight uh uh tight spread where guys are in the box. You know, you can play the run and the pass and and nullify a lot of what they do if you just get up and you press these guys right now. Hmm. You kill their you kill the timing of that offense. You kill the timing of you it. You kill the timing of their offense. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of bunch, there's a lot of a lot of uh tight spread. And I don't see anybody coming up. I see them allowing him to free release. Hmm. And that plays right into the offense's hands. It seemed like that was a big part of what Casey was doing yesterday. Like a lot of like three by one stuff. And you get those little, and you do, you just get all of a sudden without anybody pressing, it's like guys have space to operate and yeah. then you're on your heels almost. And you're, and they're always, you never get them off of their line. Yeah. You know, they never get them off their line, but you know, Casey's watching the tape that, of of the week before right. and the week before, you know they're they're seeing they're like, hey, they're gonna let you free release, yeah. so we can stay on our line and we'll be right where our where we're supposed to be timing wise. Hmm. So if you you know and and that it, and it, it just uh, to me it's it's and we argue about this in the room like is it is it the players or is it the coaching, you know? Well, I'm very familiar with this system and right. I know how this system works, you know, and um, so it's certainly a combination of the two. But it's disappointing that I'm not seeing them be more aggressive in this in 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 these opportunities because they have opportunities to change the game. I could see why it's a combination. There's no Tommy Harris. There's no Erlacher. There's no Briggs. There's no Peanut. I mean, <laughs> there, I, I mean, like seriously, like I could. And then I see both ways. I know what you mean. I mean, from a scheme standpoint or just play calling standpoint. Um, personnel standpoint, yeah, it's different. It's different than I think what a lot of Bear fans are used to when they hear cover two and they think about you guys. No. You know, you don't have a you don't have a three technique wreaking havoc in there and the right. playmakers that you guys had and like it gets hard. It does. I, it's but you know what? Um you you have players that understand what you what what's what should be asked of you. You know, um where regardless of who's in there and i think there's players they have there's some players in there especially you know uh um uh, in free agency they're bringing uh you know tj and yeah. and and edmonds you know what i mean and and sanborn's already there they should be playing fast being mm-hmm. physical mm-hmm. you got to play fast you got to be physical and the same goes with all your corners because right now listen where where we're weakest is our pass rush yeah. we know that but what we can do is we can stop the run. Yeah. We we have to make our teams one dimensional. If we can't make teams one dimensional, what good are we? It's a good point. Uh so the Broncos just gave up 70. That's the most points in an NFL game in you know a lot of our lifetimes. C- certainly ours. Yes. Gotta go back to the, the late 60s. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a college score line. Yeah, sure is. Yeah. You know, the sad thing is that they come to Soldier Field and they're a favorite, mm. <laughs> which is kind of a kick in the you know what. Yep. Uh, but none of that matters if they can actually go out and just get a win. I mean, this does afford them an opportunity against a team that's really reeling right now. Yes. They need a win badly. I mean, I, I mean you've never been part of anything like this. I mean, this is 13 straight losses, but I mean, certainly you were part of losing streaks from time to time. Like you, so you can speak to this. I mean, just for morale. I mean, what they they really need to feel good about themselves for a week here, don't <laughs> yeah. they? 
because at this point there's nothing they can do that's that's right. Yeah. There's nothing you can do that's right and except win this game. You know, every pass that Justin throws that isn't caught is going to be critiqued all the way down. Like it's it's that's us. That's who we are. Every tackle that's missed, every first down that Denver converts, oh, there we go again. You know, the best thing that the Bears can do is find a way to win. Is it good or bad to catch a team coming off a game in which they were like historically awful as Denver was? Uh, typically, no. But when they're picked to win, it kind of changes mm. the table again. You call. know, so you have there's 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 a chalkboard uh, material there for both teams. I think both, of course, the the Broncos are looking like, hey, fellas. We, we can got the win Bears. this one. Right and the They're Bears. saying the exact same thing, right? <laughs> right. They're going, we got the Bears this week. What? I mean, are you impressed with Miami? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was impressed with them last year. I just, they didn't have the defense. Yeah. They got Vic Fangio. Now they got Vic. They got Vic Fangio. You know he's, you know he's going to have some defense. So, you know, it's, they're, they're dangerous. It's early. It's yeah, early, it is. but it's dangerous. And the thing for them, the biggest risk they have is Tua. Tua, I know. It is hard to know, just like we're, you know, we're we're almost at the end of September, but the season's so long now. Yeah. Like it is, it will look different. It will change, yeah. right? I mean, it will. Justin made a great comment. He said the the Lions were yeah, lost one, six one games. And six, right? Yeah, they were one and six and they went on a on a run. Yeah. It, you know, that that mind frame is a good mind frame to have. You know, it was a great answer. Um you know, not likely. However, there are things that we haven't seen them do that they were successful with last year yet. So maybe they start doing those things that they were successful with last year, and we do turn turn some things around and, and take some steps forward. How tough would it be to lose a defensive coordinator in the middle of the season, even with a defensive-minded head coach? If I look back on the years that we were there, that I was there, we could have lost our defense coordinator. <laughs> Erlacher could have called it. Mike Brown could have called it. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we were love you. Was there? Love you was mean, there. You, you know. We were always in a situation where we could sit in the room and our coach would say, "Hey, it's it's second and ten. What would you run?" You know, and they would they would they would go around the room. Would you know, they? go around the room. What would you run? You know, and it kind of it, it got. To, there were a few games where like you guys just call it. You know exactly what you're gonna what we would call. Really? You know. And they were like, you know, Lance, you're a little more aggressive, you know, or like you're down the middle, you know, Hunter, you're conservative, you know. <laughs> That's great. That's good. I know this is the Bear Down podcast, but I almost feel like I, I got to ask Lance about his his beloved Pac-12 that I, who the hell knows what's going to happen to it. But I mean, man, they. They sh they're showing out. It's they're like, fun. To, they're they're the going out with a bang, right? <laughs> they're going out with a bang, Lance. It's they're fun to watch. Holy they're, cow! It's, it's it's this is the funnest that the pack's been in a while collectively. Um, and you know, shoot, man, I'm just watching. I'm watching Washington State play over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, they've had some coaches up there that I've known, and I knew that 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 they have some really, and they can recruit too. Yeah. Um, but they're you know they I know that they're trying to make a statement. You know, Oregon State, Oregon State, honestly, defensively or, or uh, football wise, they've 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 been a they've made noise. They they've have. made noise, you know, yeah. um, so it's not a surprise. But uh, but it's a good way to go out, man. And it's um, awesome. Yeah. I mean, shoot, listen, I, I love the Pac-12. I'm excited about the Big 12. Are you? you know, I yeah. am excited about the Big 12 for, for Arizona, um, you know, from football, from what potentially could happen football. But it's also going to be fun for basketball. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. That's for true. Basketball, basketball holy moly. The, they, did, they did something. They said, you know, it was something like um, uh, 12 out of the top 25 were would have be, would be in, in 2025 would be in the Big 12. Would be in the Big 12. Wow. And, yeah, something like seven out of the top or six out of the top 10 would be so in the Big 12. So that'll be good. Yeah, right. that's a good point. That'll mm -hmm. be fun. All right, what do you think Sunday? Bears win? Woo! I mean, it's hard to. It's hard it's to predict hard. them to win a game right now. Yeah, what we're yeah. Seeing. I mean, but it's certainly this is a golden opportunity for them. I'm like Vegas. I I I, I want to wait because I may move the point. You know what <laughs> I mean? I may move the point as we get closer. <laughs> I love it. Dude. I love it. Um, all right. So you guys will have pregame again next week. Yes. Uh, Lance, you're the man. Fun catching up with you, brother. Appreciate you. Pat will be back later this week, everybody. Uh, until then, 
somehow, some way, try to bear down. We'll see you.